Hello, hello everyone. My name is Elise. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. We are doing my book haul revisit for the month of September. I can't believe it. And I will say, so these book haul revisits, if you haven't been here before, are basically not as much for me to give you a synopsis of the book, although I will try to give a very short one, but it's more to remember for me why I bought these books in the first place, maybe where I bought them from, if there's any other context about the book and how it came into my life, and to just remind myself of which ones I've read and which ones I have not and still need to get to because I want to be reading all the books that I've bought. So I am going to go through each book, talk about if I've read them or not, and a little bit of why I might have bought them. And then at the end of this video, we're gonna be choosing at least one to put on my TBR for the next month. And it's like a must read on my TBR for the next month. So we are going to do that, but I will say, because it is the month of September, off the bat, I know that next month is October. So this book will be going on my October TBR, and I only read thematic things in October. So all the spooky things. So we're gonna have to pick something that would fit that vibe. And I'm already nervous because I'm like, oh my God, what if there isn't anything? And then what if there's like only one thing? That means I have to read all the rest of the books by the time we get to next September. I can't put a non-spooky book on my TBR for October. It just can't happen. So we might need to read a lot of things. So let's go ahead and get into it. First up, we have Mrs. Caliban. This one I have read and it is a novella about a housewife in the 60s. I just always guess the 60s. I don't know why, but I think it is in the 60s. And she is in a loveless marriage. That's gonna come up later, I think, in this haul. She's listening to the radio one day and there is a news report saying that an amphibious-like man has escaped from a research facility and to call the police if you see him. This man shows up at her front door and asks for refuge from her. She decides to take him in and they end up kind of having a relationship. So that's the synopsis. I read it, I really enjoyed it. I think the ending is wild. It is such a good feminist novel. And if you like some of these speculative, juicy, plotty takes on women trying to break out of their cages that they were in when they had very little agency, this is a great version of that. So highly recommend Mrs. Caliban. Next up, my laptop's over here, that's why I'm looking over here, is The Haunting Season by a variety of authors. And this I have also read. I read it last year during October. This would have been a great one to put on an October TBR. I already did that. So this I enjoyed but I didn't love all of the stories um, so it was kind of middling for me. It's definitely very spooky. It's all ghost or ghost-ish tales but they aren't super horrific in nature. They have a more like a cozy creepy vibe than straight horror and I do remember my favorite one from this was about eel singers. It might be called the eel singers um, but it has to do with a man who has the ability to see potential future outcomes. And it is sort of taking a toll on him, having to see all of these potential future outcomes, because some are not pretty. And he decides that he's going to go with his partner and their kind of adoptive daughter to a town where he knows this part of his brain just doesn't work for some reason. He's not sure why. When they get there for their vacation, you start to realize why he doesn't have the potential future visions in this area. And it is very sinister. So very much enjoyed that. If you're looking for something that's a little bit on the cozier side, but still ghostly, this might be a really good pick for you. So that is haunting season. Next up we have one I have not read. Oh, but this could be a very good pick. It's The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. This is published by Viper and Janice Howitt famously wrote The Appeal, which is a kind of a cozy murder mystery that's told in uh, mixed media. And this is also a mixed media. This one happens to be in audio files 
and these are very much encouraging you to try and solve the murder along with the story. There's a woman called Miss Isles who is very interested in Edith Twyford and she starts to look through her novels and decides that in her novels there is the key to some mysterious puzzle and then Miss Isles disappears. So it's sort of like a enigmatic mystery author, someone's looking into them, they disappear, and then all of a sudden more people want to try and figure out what Miss Isles was looking into. So that's the mystery in this one, again told in audio files, so this could be a very good pick, but we shall see. We will come back to that. So next up we have Daddy's Gone A-Hunting. This is by Maddie Mortimer and it's published by McNally Editions. I just read this in August. So whew, got one just in the nick of time. And I really enjoyed this. This takes place in, or this was written in the 50s. And it's about a woman named Ruth who is very discontented in her marriage. She is depressed and has an older daughter named Angela and two middle kind of like teenage sons that are off at boarding school and her husband is kind of a buffoon he's having an affair on her and she knows he kind of knows that she knows and yeah it's about her daughter telling her that she is pregnant and she needs an abortion and then she all of a sudden is thrust into trying to help her daughter find an abortion and she has lots of reflective moments about her own pregnancies and is really just trying to make it work when she is not used to making a lot of decisions or anything like that. So that is Daddy's Gone A-Hunting. Very good. Next up, we have Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies. This is by Maddie Mortimer, and I'm pretty sure I just said Daddy's Gone A-Hunting is by Maddie Mortimer. It's not. It's Penelope Mortimer. So correction there if I said that wrong. But yes, this um, Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies, I have read it. Very much enjoyed it. It was in my favorite books of last year. It is an experimental novel about a woman who has cancer and it's also about her family and sort of the collateral effects of her having cancer. You get to see the perspectives of her, her husband, her daughter, and also cancer itself within her body. And those sections where cancer is narrating is they're very experimental. Um, so I, I don't have the book here to physically show you, but there'll be like words mishmashed all over the page or like some words really big and some really small. And yeah, this is a kind of heartbreaking take on what it's like to know that you're coming to the end of your life and what it's like for your family to know that and to still have some hope, but very little and to be reflecting back on a life lived and trying to come to peace with the life that you've lived thus far. And I really, really enjoyed it, loved it, highly recommend. So that is Maps of Our Spectacular Body. Next up we have Briefly A Delicious Life. I think we're getting into a bunch of the books that I have not read now. So this is by Nell Stevens and it is published by Scribner. A ghost falls in love with a woman basically, I think is what's going on here. This could, this has a ghost. I could use this as well. Intriguing. So this one I bought because a bunch of people were loving it last year and it just sounded kind of like right up my alley. And again, people were just loving it. So love sapphic book. This does have a ghost. This could be a good pick. That's this one. Next up, we have The Good Americans by Leila Lalani, and this one is published by Pantheon. Now, I bought this one because I have really enjoyed Leila Lalani in the past. I've read a couple of her novels, but it's been a long time since I've picked one up, and this was on sale at one of my local indies, so I bought it, and I have not read it yet. I don't even know what this is about, honestly. It says, Late one spring night, a Moroccan immigrant living in California is walking across a darkened intersection when he's killed by a speeding car. The repercussions of his death bring together a diverse cast of characters. So that's all I'm going to read. Intriguing. Intriguing. I don't think this would be a good pick for spooky season, even though someone did die. But 
yeah, I definitely need to get to this soon. Also, this shimmery cover is so lovely. So that is the other Americans. Next we have, oh, okay. So the rest of them are all books from my mother-in-law. This happens quite frequently now in these book haul revisits. And I'm getting a sense of how many I haven't read yet. So let's go ahead and get into them. First one we have. The Girl from Widow Hills. This is by Megan Miranda and published by Simon & Schuster. My mother-in-law has sent me Megan Miranda's in the past. I have enjoyed said Megan Miranda's in the past and this would definitely be a good pick. I do tend to find her a very consistent thriller writer and she always places her kind of thrillers in small towns and I very much enjoy that. So this could be a good one for that. Next we have The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This is published by St. Martin's Press. For my books my mother-in-law gave me vlog, which came out not too long ago, I read a Megan Miranda and a Kristen Hanna. I thought about putting this one on that TBR um, as the historical fiction, but I ended up doing The Nightingale instead, which is also by Kristen Hanna and very much enjoyed it. This, I believe, is about the Dust Bowl. Don't know much more than that. I am still intrigued to read this, but don't think it would be good for spooky season. So that one's out for now. Next, we have another Megan Miranda. This is Such a Quiet Place, and it is published by Simon & Schuster. Again, could also be a good one to read. This is the one Megan Miranda that I'm uh, more hesitant about. And honestly, I think that's just because this is the most suburban of the ones that I have. And I really love her super atmospheric small town vibes. And I just feel like suburbia doesn't give the same experience as say like a small town in the woods or a tiny little beach town or whatever it might be. So I don't know if, if that's valid or not in this case, but I am slightly more nervous about this one than this one for whatever reason. I don't know, but these would both be good picks. So that is such a quiet place. And lastly, we have The Plot. This is by Jean Hanf Korlitz and published by Sell it on books. This was a very big release when it first came out. It's also a mystery, so that could be intriguing as well. And it's about a teacher who has a student who's very cocky and arrogant. And this student says that they have the perfect plot for a novel. And their book is going to be huge because the plot is so good. It's just going to be irresistible and people are going to eat it up. This upsets the professor because the professor has been trying to write for a long time now and has not been successful at it. So the student tells him the plot and the teacher's like, holy shit, you're right. That's an amazing plot and you are going to sell a lot of books. The student then dies and the professor's like, well, if he's not going to use that plot, I might as well. And they do. I believe in this book, you get the actual plot interspersed into the book. Like the, the plot of what these characters are talking about is in this book. Plus you get their narrative, like real time for them of what's going on. Because I think the professor gets a letter or a note saying that somebody knows what he did. So that is a plot. This could also be a good pick. So let's see, there are several contenders in this list for the ones that I haven't read. I will say, so for the ones that I've read versus haven't read, I have read one, two, three, four, four of the books, and I have not read six. So I've read four, not read six. Yeah, I honestly thought it was going to be worse, so we can live with this. These are the ones that I think would be good contenders for October. So there's actually a decent amount, which I'm pleased with, because that means if I don't read all of these by the time we get to the book call revisit next year, I know that's crazy far out, that I'll still have some options for October. But, ooh, okay. Honestly, here, here's what I'm thinking. I'm tempted to pick this. I think this will be really fun. Balance out some of the like darker things I'm going to be reading in October. And this what I've heard is a fantastic audiobook because it's told in audio files. So I think this is going to be my official pick. Actually, I'm just saying it. this is my official pick for what I'm going to read in October. But 
Similarly to a couple of months ago, I'm going to do a secondary one and I'm going to pick The Girl from Widow Hills, one of the Megan Miranda books. It's a paperback. That's really nice. Um, and yeah, I want to make sure I'm, I'm getting through some of these books that my mother-in-law is sending me. So I'm going to put this on there as well. I find her very reliable and I think I will enjoy this. I could also pick this up via audiobook if I wanted to. So this is the official pick that I need to read. This is a secondary pick that I'm going to put on my TBR as a maybe. So here we have the two selections. Please let me know if you read any of these and what you thought of them and what you think of the two that I picked. Should I have chosen something else? You tell me and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.